Waller PPKS 380. Gonna take some shots at the steel target at about 15 yards. First time he's shooting, so let's see what, see what happens, huh? That was extremely sweet, I gotta admit. Hello my YouTube friends, Late Boy Scout here, and this is a brief review of the Walther PPKS in 380 ACP. I'm fortunate to have this gun on loan. I was able to take a few shots with it, not a ton. Um, and I'm here to give you my review on it today. Boy, what a sexy gun, right? Oh, man. I've always wanted to get my hands on one of these. And pretty much I've, I've come to the conclusion that I'm never going to buy one, but I've always wanted to shoot one. And, you know, I'm always going to want to own one. It's just one of those things. It's... Um, it's a classic, you know, this gun is a classic, and I appreciate uh, the way it looks, and the history behind it, and its reputation in pop culture, um, its presence in pop culture, let's, let's put it that way, i.e. the James Bond films, right? This is the James Bond gun, <laughs> you all know that. Actually, that was the PPK, this is the PPKS, slight difference there, I'll get into that as I continue this review. Uh, this classic, na the classic nature of this gun makes it a very collectible one, and like I said, it's one I want to own, even though this gun has really been eclipsed by smaller, lighter weight guns, Caltech P3AT, for instance, also in the same caliber, 380 ACP, much lighter, okay, accuracy-wise, you know, it's up to the shooter. It, it's, this can still be an accurate gun, just as accurate as this, I think, in the right hands. Um, you know, other comparisons, you know, side by side, look, they're, they're not the same gun. They're, they're very, very different guns, obviously. They shoot the same caliber, and that's about it. This one's considerably heavier than this, considerably larger than this. But think about that for a second. This gun in that sense, has been eclipsed by something much, much smaller and much, much lighter. It's also been eclipsed, in another sense, by a gun that's comparable in size, but tremendously more powerful. Glock 27 here in 40 cal. Shoots a much hotter round, can do a lot more damage than the 380 ACP. Both of them are deadly, I'm not going to argue that point. Both of them are um, both of them are definitely deadly, but this holds more rounds to 10, 10 rounds in this double stack magazine versus seven rounds plus one in this single stack magazine. So it holds more rounds and they are more powerful. The point I'm trying to make here, guys, is that this gun is, you could say it's been replaced by modern um, alternatives. Eclipsed is what I like to call it. It hasn't been replaced. It's still there. But the modern alternatives are so attractive and make so much sense that buying this to fill the role of this or of this, um, it's, it's difficult to say that it makes sense. It's difficult to say that it makes sense for me, okay? Just me talking here. Let's move on. The Walther PPK, designed and manufactured by Carl, Carl Walther, GmbH, a sports Waffen in Germany, was released in 1931 as a smaller, more concealable follow-up to the Walther PP. And that originated in 1929. Both guns were very popular with European police and civilians for being reliable and concealable. The PPK is famously known as the gun Adolf Hitler shot and killed himself with. That, that was the 32 ACP, by the way. And uh, he did that, at the course, in his bunker at the end of World War II. It's also, like I mentioned before, known as the James Bond gun that Ian Fleming wrote into his novels as the one that uh, British secret agent James Bond would carry. 007 gun. There it is. The PPKS, of course, differs from the PPK and the PP, and it was developed... Uh, following the Gun Control Act of 1968, which required a certain length weight and sporting features 
to be on any gun that's imported into the United States. The PPK failed to meet those requirements, so the PPK barrel and slide were basically married to the PP frame to create this, the PPKS. After World War II, occupation by the Soviets and pressure from the Allies forced Walder to license the manufacture of its firearms to other countries. And today, the PPK and the PPKS are manufactured by Smith & Wesson and still continue to be very popular among firearm enthusiasts. Now that we've spent some time handling this firearm, let's go ahead and safety check it. Should have done that at the beginning, I know. But don't worry, it was never loaded the whole time I was showing it to you. Safety's on, and I can see there's nothing in the chamber. We have a safe gun here, guys. Let's go ahead and examine some of the features. The caliber, of course, is 380 ACP. Let's line that up here with two other rounds that you're probably familiar with. 380 ACP being the smallest of those three. Uh, packs the least amount of punch, but I'm not going to argue the fact that it's still a very deadly round. 9mm, a good in-between from the 40 cal and 380 ACP, is also very deadly. Let's not call that a wimpy round either. 40, of course, a very, very substantial cartridge. Not the most impressive one you can find, but, you know, it's a pretty sweet one, and it does some serious damage. The barrel length on this gun is 3.35 inches from about there to there. The size and weight, well the weight is about 22.4 ounces, that's with no magazine. Okay, if you were to take that out, no, no rounds, no magazine, you're looking at 22.5 ounces. Okay, that's pretty substantial. Let's talk about the size. I'm looking at about 6 and a quarter inches in length, total length. Okay, including that beaver tail, about 4.75, 4 and 3 quarters, okay, from there to the top. And that uh, did not include the sights, so let's add the sights in and make that, oh, let's see, 4 and 7 eighths, the width. At the narrowest point, you're looking at probably 7 eighths, okay, for just the slide, but when you get to the widest point, which is down here at the base of the handle, you're looking at one and one eighth, about, all right? Again, in comparison to, let's say, the Caltech P3 AT, um, there's really no comparison, all right? Caltech just makes a much smaller gun. And I'm not just, not just bringing in Caltech in this argument, of course, as far as size and weight go, uh, because um, Ruger makes a very, very small gun. A lot of other companies make very small 380 guns. Not necessarily exactly this small, but pretty small and pretty, still pretty accurate and still pretty manageable. One of the reasons I argue that uh, this has sort of been eclipsed in that sense. Let's look at the sights real quickly. They are fixed, not really adjustable at all. And this is about the sight picture that you're going to look at. And I feel like this can be a pretty accurate gun. Uh, the shooting that I was able to do with it wasn't the most impressive, but again, it's really up to the shooter to become accurate with the gun and uh, manage the system. And I think this is a system, a sighting system, that can easily be managed and you can become quite accurate with this gun. Let's talk about the grip. It's quite hand-filling. That's one thing about the Walder PPKS that it, one thing about it that it has over smaller guns like this one, where there's a, there's a short, not very hand-filling grip. It's really only like a one full finger that I can get on there. With the magazine in place, I can almost get the second finger around it. Okay, so that's what you're looking at. That's what you lose with this. And what you gain with this, I can actually get three fingers on that grip. That is pretty nice, okay? And it's a nice hand-filling grip. I've got semi-large hands. And, uh... This feels really nice in hand. The trigger is a hefty six pounds in a single action mode, i.e., let's get that safety off so we know what we're doing. From here, if I were to just pull that trigger, that's six pounds, okay, to release that. Um, 
and in double action mode, wow. What you're looking at there is 13.4, okay? About 13 and a half. That's some serious weight, more so than most revolvers I've tried. And about, about as heavy as any uh, double action I've ever tried. All right, what we have here is the safety slash decocker. All right, so if you've got that cocked back into a single action mode, you would actually just need to rotate that down and that decocks it. All right. Now, uh, the hammer obviously has this uh, nice little knurling slash jimping on it. Makes it uh, very easy to grab and pull back. All right, let's get that back off safe. Feels really nice to handle that and manage that. I like that hammer. The magazine release is not where I'm used to, but again, I'm not going to question it. This is a classic gun. It's designed to be what it is. You know what I'm used to, of course, is this position here. I'm used to that on the Caltech as well. That's what I'm used to. The more modern, the more modern guns is what I'm used to. This was designed in 1930s. Okay, 1931. They were thinking a little differently back then, okay? And that worked for them. So get used to the gun and you'll be all right with it. Okay, now we'll talk about the magazine while we're, while we're there. The magazine capacity for the PPKS is seven rounds plus one in the chamber. So a total of eight you can carry in this gun. There's a nice beaver tail at the end of the grip. It's been extended on this model in order to prevent slide bite or hammer bite for that matter. I don't think we've talked about disassembly and reassembly yet so let's get to that. Here's what we're gonna do. The magazine's out, we know it's clear, all right? So what we, do, what we do is we have it on safe. We take the trigger guard, and we pull that down and let go of it. And what happens there is it sort of moves to one side and gets caught on the frame. That's all that's happening there, okay? Then at this stage, you grab that slide and you pull it as far back as it'll go and then you raise it up and move it forward and I'm going to demonstrate that now. Pull it as far back as it'll go, I'm raising it up and I'm slowly sliding it forward, okay? That's what I've done and I pulled it off the frame, okay? At this stage, you clean the heck out of that, which I've already done actually after shooting it. Clean the heck out of all that, all that gunk. Do the same with the barrel and the inside of the frame, okay, that slide ramp, the feed ramp, all this stuff here, brush it out, clean it out as best you can, and it'll just go right back together. Um, but before I put it back together, let me show you a little hiccup, a little, a little something that I found that uh, was, I found to be kind of tricky in reassembling this gun. Here's what it is. This part right here, the ejector is what this is called. I'm talking about this piece right here, okay? And inside of that, between the ejector and the frame, there's a little spring. Okay, and now you gotta get that spring back in there exactly the right way or this ejector is not going to lock the frame back on the last round. So that's pretty important. I think it's gonna be okay if that goes back in for now. Um, let's go ahead and pop this out and I'll try to demonstrate how that goes back in properly. And that doesn't want to pop out for me now. But it did pop out on accident. Okay, here we go. It did pop out on accident as I was uh, reassembling it before. That's why I want to show you how this goes back in. It's pretty important here. And uh, you'll be able to find this, of course, if you Google around for an exploded view of the gun. You'll be able to find this and figure this out. But it took me a little while to figure it out. So that's why I wanted to include this. Here's the spring, okay? Now that spring has to be oriented exactly like that and it has to go down inside the, uh, the ejector just like this, okay? Now there's a little indent there, you see that line? Okay, that's a little, that's ground out and it's uh, got room for the spring in there. So you've gotta get that spring down in, in there like this, okay, and it doesn't wanna stay, it just wanna, wants to kinda of flop around. You gotta get it down in there just like that Reconnect it like so. 
Okay, that little pin goes into that hole, sort of as a rotating kind of thing. And then this actually, you see this little piece, it goes behind that part, portion of the frame. Okay, and what you want to do at this point is get that spring into another detent in the frame. I'm going to have a hard time showing this to you, but there's another detent right here inside the frame in which that spring rests. That's where it has to go. That's the only place it can go. The spring has to be oriented like this and it has to go into that position. And if it pops out on you, it's going to be a little bit tricky to get it back in place as it was for me. In fact, let's get this, pay a little closer attention to it real quick. Okay, and it's back in place. So you can see that was a little bit tricky to do. Now that will become less tricky if when you get it to the stage you put the magazine back in. Then it puts this pressure on the ejector and makes it so it will not pop out. Okay. However, that also limits your ability to get certain areas clean. So you can go the easy way or the hard way. If you go the hard way, just know how that goes back in. Okay. I hope I've shown you that properly. Now let's get the slide back on and move forward. Can't forget to uh, pull that trigger guard back out in order to get the slide back on. Okay, and it just, if you have the magazine out, actually, will slide forward again. Trigger guard goes back, and you're ready. Okay, you've got an operational gun, and let's just check that by putting the magazine in making sure that this stays backwards. Yes, it does. And that's how you know that you got the ejector and the spring back in the right way. And if you didn't, then pretty much there are three other ways you can do it. And if you get it in any one of those other ways, this will not lock back, okay? And you'll get frustrated and you'll have to spend some time Googling and figuring out what you did wrong. So again, magazine out and that lets that forward. Okay, if I didn't describe this already, it's a straight blowback design, and uh, I think for those of you who don't know what straight blowback means, it's the other type of semi-auto, basically. Here, the Glock uh, 27, for instance, is not straight blowback. This is lock breech. And what happens here is the slide and barrel travel backward together for a short distance before separating, okay? And that's how the action works. The barrel is actually, I'll just show you. The barrel is actually not connected to the frame at all. Okay, the barrel sits inside of there, is held in by spring tension as you're disassembling it. Not connected to the frame whatsoever. That's pretty much the case with any lock breech design. And um, straight blowback design is basically the opposite. The barrel is connected to the frame and you saw that in the disassembly. So, something to note about it, and if you find that there's a, an, an advantage to either straight blowback or to lock breech, just bear that in mind as you shop for this gun and think about this gun and consider this gun. This is straight blowback, and it comes with all the, um, all the characteristics that straight blowback guns come with. Now, I mentioned before that the PPKS has been, by, in my opinion, eclipsed by today's firearms market full of smaller, lighter, and higher capacity guns, which arguably fill the concealed carry role better than the PPK or PPKS ever did. However, at a still manageable weight and size, this gun does work in that role, concealed carry. And, since it does it with more style and class than just about any modern offering, the Walther PPKS might just be the concealed carry or backup gun for you. So check your local gun shop for this beauty. Expect to pay 600 plus for it. You do get a spare magazine. Have fun finding 380 ammo. <laughs> That's actually not that hard these days, but it's still kind of expensive. About the same as 40 cal which kind of sucks, pay the same amount for this weaker round as you do for this heavier round, but whatever. It's all about having your gun with you. 
the Walder PPKS. I just can't help but love it. I'm a late Boy Scout. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you later.